Hey, you're listening to the Savannah Zombie Podcast, the podcast of author Josh Vasquez, that's me, uh, where I talk about writing books, zombies, and other nerdy things, whichever comes to mind for that day. No, I, I try to keep it planned. I have uh, an idea of what I want to do for the next uh, few episodes. I've got a few ideas in the uh, in the gauntlet, so uh, yeah. But uh, hey, welcome. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you tuned in last week, then you uh, got a double dose of episodes, which probably won't be the norm. Um, we'll see. Um, right now, uh, I was kind of aiming for just doing one episode a week. And uh, but to get things started, uh, I'm going to do two uh, episodes a week for last week, this week and next week. So three weeks in a row. Uh, The second episode in each week is uh, one part of the short story that I wrote, um, A New Death, CJ story, which is set in the Savannah zombie novel series universe. And it is a three parts because I actually recorded uh, an audiobook version of it, and it's available on YouTube. So if you, for some reason, don't want to wait two more weeks to hear the other two parts, you're more than welcome to go over to YouTube, the Savannah Zombie Novel page, and uh, check those out. I uh, appreciate if you leave a like and a comment on there. Let me know what you think. Uh, that would mean a lot to me. But if you uh, like uh, waiting a week for new content, if you're old school and you like uh, not binging on new things and <laughs> you like for some reason waiting for the next episode to come out, hey, next, probably thir- this Thursday, uh, part two of the uh, CJ story will be on, on the podcast so you can listen to it there. Sorry, I had to take a sip of coffee. Um, but, uh, yeah, so today I'm actually recording, uh, in my house, so the audio might be a little bit less noisier in the background. Um, the reason behind that is because the, uh, I have an iPhone 7, and, uh, for some reason, uh, when they got to the 7, Apple decided that, hey, you don't need a headphone jack anymore, you can just use this lightning jack for everything. Well, the lightning jack on my iPhone is, uh, it's getting kind of worn, so um, I just had to replace my power cable, and I need to replace the little uh, the little extension dongle that they have for it that I can use like headphones and my microphone, which I use for doing this podcast. And I just haven't gotten one yet. Uh, it's like nine dollars, which doesn't seem like much, but it's also the time of the month where rents due. So you know, there's a uh, there's priorities: rent, home iPhone dongle, you know, certain things can wait. So, yeah, I might be sipping a little bit more coffee today, so there might be a few pauses. You might hear some slurpage, but uh, not to worry. Everything's okay. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm at the house and uh, should probably be getting ready for work, but I'm not. I'm doing this podcast because I can't do it in my car. Yeah. So anyways, uh, I haven't been up to uh, much. Um, I know like the last few times I got on here and uh, talked of like, hey, I was just on the radio, was not on the radio this past week. But you can still go check out Muse's memoirs and more because um, this past week, not okay, not this most recent Saturday, but the one before uh, Adam had a guest on there. And his name was uh, Winford Strock and Win- Winfield, excuse me, Winfield Strock. And um, he uh, is another author and he's kind of in the area, he's a little bit more south uh, towards Brunswick area. And uh, so they had some technical difficulties and Adam was uh, nice enough to bring him back on so you can catch the full interview of uh, this past week. So go to uh, Adam's YouTube page, which is Muses Memoirs and More, and you can uh, check out that episode. He's got a great take on things. Uh, he's kind of been in the uh, the writing game for a little while now. He's been with a small press publisher. He's self-published some books. Um, I guess he's, uh, you'd consider him more of a, an indie author now. But uh, yeah, he uh, worked on the submarine for a long time in the Navy, and he had a brain tumor and was able to um, get past that. So it's a really cool story. Uh, go check that out, and then um, you know, let uh, let Adam know what you think, and uh, let Win know what you think. 
because uh, it was a really good episode. I listened to it on my way to work yesterday, and uh, I enjoyed it. So, uh, but yeah, so not much going on here. Just uh, going through my daily routines and whatnot. Um, uh, the one thing I have started doing more recently, and it's probably because uh, the people at work uh, got me into it, but uh, no, no, it's not not drugs, not drugs and alcohol. Well, maybe a little bit of alcohol, but not so much the drugs, um, but it could be considered addictive to some. Uh, but anyways, I've gotten back into playing Pokemon Go, <laughs> which um, when it first came out, which was... I. I think they just did their second anniversary was was uh, about two years ago. I remember when it came out and uh, I like I downloaded it that day and I was supposed to be going to a uh, our family was getting together. We were going to Hilton Head Beach and all that, but I was getting off work and um, so I had to drive out there separately and I was playing Pokemon Go on my way out there and then I got to Hilton Head Beach and I was in the Caligny Plaza, and there was just so much stuff out there, pokey stops and all that. And it was just so crazy because it was this new thing. And uh, the phone I had at the time couldn't even support the uh, the AR function. So I couldn't, like, see the Pokemon in, like, real-life situations. It was kind of just the little cartoony background. But it was still super cool because uh, I've always been a fan of the Pokemon games uh, ever since they, like, originally came out in the States. Uh, which I want to say was 97, 90, I think they came out in 97. Um, I can't remember if I got it in 97 or 98. I don't remember exactly, but I do remember before I even got the game, I wanted the game because my friend had it and he let me play it. And um, he like had like the whole thing beat and like had like a whole bunch of Pokemon. And he very, very, very... uh, strictly inform me not to save the game but like i played for two hours and i got to like the next city which i thought was like really far in the game and i was like dude i gotta save this game and i told him about it and he was like he was like literally in tears because i saved over (laughs) his entire game and it wasn't until i actually played the game that i realized how big of a mistake and how bad that was but uh yeah so um before I even got the game, I remember we were in a um, bookstore, and of course, and uh, I found the strategy guide for it. It was the the Prima strategy guide, and uh, uh, I bought that, and I must have read through that thing so many times before I even got the game, and it was like I knew the game before I even before I even played it, and uh, I don't know. I almost kind of enjoyed it that way because I remember um, when I went to go play Gold and Silver, I did the same thing and I bought a strategy guide and I read through it and it was one of the best strategy guides I've ever seen because it was so thorough and they, I don't know, that company went out of business, but they don't make them anymore and everything went to either like, it was either Prima and then eventually they just are all online walkthroughs now. But, uh, which now they're all like walk through videos, but, uh, yeah, that thing was super thorough. It had like every trainer and what Pokemon they had. So you could always have yours in the right position to get the most experience. But yeah, I've loved Pokemon ever since it came out. Um, as you can tell, because I've been talking about it for like the past 10 minutes. Um, so I've pretty much played almost every variation of the game. Um, the last one I really played was black and white. Uh, I didn't play black and white two or the uh the newer ones uh sun and moon so uh but i haven't had a ds in a while and uh i kind of want one but at the same time uh i'm currently playing uh (laughs) soul silver again but i'm playing it on my emulator um on my android device uh which is the one thing that i wished my iphone had was was that but for some reason apple doesn't allow that on there because i don't know reasons but uh yeah uh, super love those games, but I've been playing Pokemon Go more. There's a few people at work, and they 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 play it, and uh, so we've been talking about going going downtown and playing. Which like downtown Savannah is like Pokemon Go like heaven because we have so many historical markers and so many different uh, like attractions and all that down there. And so there's it's just like Pokestops galore. There's so many gyms, and like of course because there's so many Pokestops, there's like so many Pokemon. And I just can't even imagine like living out in a rural area and trying to play this game. It's got to be so hard. 
Like, so if, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you live in a rural area and uh, you're playing Pokemon Go and you're level 40, you, you're the real deal. You're, you're OG. So um, yeah, props to you. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've been playing that and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and I got to say this about the Pokemon Go app. They are one of the best uh, examples of trying to keep their app fresh. They're constantly updating their um, their information. Like, I think they're fixing to roll out uh, Generation 4 Pokemon, which, of course, if you're listening to this and uh, you don't know anything about Pokemon and Pokemon just bores you to death, you can just skip ahead. I'll try to put, like, the times in there in the show notes and you can just skip the whole Pokemon talk. But if you're if you're like me and you, <laughs> you love Pokemon or you have a mild interest in Pokemon or, hey, you just like Pokemon Go, um, keep on listening. But uh, so... Um, Dang it, I completely forgot what I was saying. Darn you, people that don't like Pokemon, and I had to feel like I had to cater to you in this 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 conversation. But uh, anyways, so been playing that. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, they uh, updates. They're super good about updating their uh, their content. Like, you know, some of the apps you get, and you're like, man, I wish they would, like, like do some more with this, and they never do. Um, or the same, same deal with like, uh, like other games, like you get a game that you really love and you're like, man, I really wish they would have put more content out for this. Like, uh, like I remember when, um, Left 4 Dead 2 came out, I was a really big fan of Left 4 Dead 1 and I was like, I also hope that they still kind of keep making content for this, um, which they said they would, but they kind of made one campaign, one, it was like a mini campaign and that was really, that was it for that, um. Now, of course, Left 4 Dead 2, they, they did a couple couple more campaigns, and uh, there's plenty of user content that you can download uh, if you were using Steam. Not so much on the Xbox, but, uh, but uh, yeah. So, um, anyways, uh, yeah, that's me uh, talking about games and stuff like that. Um, what games are you guys playing? Let me know. Uh, if you're listening on Anchor FM, you can leave me voice messages. Let me know what games you're playing, what uh, what floats your boat right now, what you're uh, working on, what you're grinding in. And uh, yeah, if not, then you can uh, leave it uh, on the Facebook page. Uh, you can go to Savannah Zombie Novel. I think it's just Savannah Zombie. Yeah, Savannah Zombie Novel. Uh, YouTube or Facebook page. And uh, you can leave, leave me a, a comment on there. Let me know what you're playing. Um, I love other games too, so not just Pokemon, but, uh, yeah. So that's one thing that's kind of been, uh, I've been just doing in the, in the meantime as I'm, you know, it's, it's one thing, uh, it's easy to kind of do when you have free time, but when you don't have free time, Pokemon Go is kind of like, (laughs) uh, I made the mistake of, uh, it was 4th of July recently and uh our our thing is to our family and a, a few friends we normally go down to the savannah river and watch the fireworks there um like i said that's uh, kind of like downtown savannah and there's a lot of pokemon stops and gyms and i might have spent too much time on my phone might possibly have gotten in trouble for that so i'm also trying to um correct that and not spend as much time on my phone and i say that as i am uh talking into my phone recording a podcast which i I kind of see as ironic, but at the same time, my wife's at work and I'm home alone. And so there's that. But anyways, enough of me talking about Pokemon and Go. You're not here for that. You're not here for me talking about uh, a game that I play in my spare time. You're here for the real facts. And those real facts today are about writing. So um, in the intro that I do, um, I basically uh, kind of open it up and say that, like, hey, this is just a podcast of me talking about books, writing, zombies, and other nerdy things. So I think I've tackled the other nerdy things. Um, so today we're going to tackle one of the other topics, and that is writing. So um, there's, and this is kind of inspired by uh, Adam Messer's show, Muses, Memoirs, and More, um, just uh, different conversations he's had on there. And um, he also has a, um, a, uh, 
column that he does in one of our local newspaper sections, the Savannah Do. It's called the Geek Fringe, where he talks with um, just different people who are kind of uh, involved in the geek community here in Savannah, uh, which is very cool. But one thing that um, Adam has a passion for is the talking with authors and writers and uh, just learning their craft. And uh, it's pretty cool because uh, Adam is currently working on his first uh, book series, I guess. Um, it's I, I don't think you would mind me sharing what it's called. It's called The Coven of Savannah. And it is basically, um, it's about um, a secret society of vampires here in Savannah, Georgia. Which is cool because uh, me and him had talked about it. And was like, there's not really anything vampire related here. I know there is a book series um, that is uh, more geared towards, uh, I guess, witchcraft and magic. Um, it's called the uh, Witching Savannah series. And that's by J.D. Horn, um, who doesn't live here. I think he lives in Seattle. But uh, I actually met him down on River Street. He was doing a uh, little kind of book signing at one of the stores down there. And uh, I saw it in the paper and I was like, hey, I'll go check it out. So I popped in there and I talked to him for a little bit. And I was like, uh, yeah, he's a really cool guy. Uh, I picked up the first book, which is The Line. And uh, it was it was really good. Um, and I enjoyed it. It's very uh, kind of almost uh, soap opery and very, oh, twist and turns and um, this person's not who you think they are, and oh, this person's not who you think they are. So it really fits in the Savannah vibe, and it's got witches and magic. So if you're fans of like uh, Harry Potter and stuff like that, um, you would dig it. And so check that out. But uh, back to Adam. Adam is currently working on his first series, so it's very cool to see that. Um, it's always very cool when you see uh, somebody starting like their writing career, or getting interested in writing, and uh, wanting to publish a book, and uh, just that whole that whole drive and all that. So um, it's it's been very fun to watch him like interview people, and I just see like the wheels turning when he does that, or like if I'm listening, I can I can just uh, picture him. Like like trying to remember notes and taking stuff down because he's learning just as much as he's trying to get out there for uh, for the listeners of his show. So that's pretty cool. But uh, so anyways, writing has been on my mind uh, lately. And just like uh, since this is one of the topics that I'd like to uh, tackle with this podcast, I figured I'd go ahead and dive in. So um, this is the one, this is the the episode about the writing advice. And um, yeah, the writing advice is great. But here is the one thing I want you to take away from, the, from this episode. All right, this is number one on my list. I wrote this list down. And these are the things I'm going to talk about. But this is number one, all right? And I want you to hear this, all right? If you're starting, if you're a budding writer and you're, you haven't even written your first word yet, but you, you want to write a book, or maybe you have written stories and 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 you not really sure where to go next with them, or maybe you even like have published books and you have a whole book series out there, or maybe you're uh, Stephen King, I don't know, maybe he's listening, I don't know, I doesn't really the statistics don't really tell me who's listening they just tell me how many people's listening Stephen King if you're listening hey what's up I appreciate your your books on writing but number one still applies all writing advice sucks okay and listen I want you to understand that I'm I am talking about writing advice and I'm, I'm fixing to give you my writing advice but I want you to know something it sucks all right and here's the reason I say that so basically, writing advice is one person telling you what worked for them. And the problem with that is you are not them. You are not Josh Vasquez. You are not Adam Messer. You're not Stephen King. You're not Neil Gaiman. You're not uh, Joss Whedon. You're not Zack Snyder. You're not anybody. You are you. So when I say writing advice sucks, I want you to go into the mindset of whenever you take in writing advice, which I am not saying don't take in writing advice and ignore all writing advice because that is dumb. Don't do that. But when you go into it, know that, okay, this is what works for them. How can I take that information? How can I learn from what they did and make that work for me? All right. 
writing advice is not a one size fits all. It's not, hey, do these things and you will be a best selling author. It's like, hey, these are the things that worked for me. You can use them however they fit you. So when I say writing advice sucks, please, I just always want you, especially especially you new, new writers or if you're new to like the publishing game or you're an indie author, there are so, so many people out there telling you what to do and how to do it, which is both helpful, but I don't know, for me sometimes it seems like it's too much and it's like crushing weight on you. Like, how can I, how can I even do it when there's like so many people out there who are telling me? And um, so, yeah, just know that writing advice, it sucks. Um, it is useful. Okay, but um, just know that when somebody gives you writing advice, that's what worked for them. It might not work for you. You might operate differently. You your mind might work differently. So just do that. Just whenever you go into it, and whenever you sit down, and you're like either you're reading a book on writing, or you're watching a YouTube video from an author, and um, you're listening to a podcast by some hack author from Savannah, uh, just know that this writing device that might have worked for them, um, but you need to find what works for you, all right? Don't lose your individuality in a sea of authors because that can be very easy to do. Um, so that that's that's my number one thing is just, just know that. And if you go into this and you listen to these next four things with that mindset, I feel like that's going to help you a lot more than me just saying, hey, do these things and you can be like me. Don't be like me. Be you. Um, so that's number one. All right. Number two, and this one is a very popular, and you have, if you've listened to any other writing uh, advice uh podcast or read any books, you, you've no doubt heard this one. And number two is write what you know. Um, but here's the thing about write what you know. Uh, it's very easy to also get stuck in that and be like, okay, well, um, I only operate a forklift for a living. Um, so does that mean I only write books about about forklifts and working in warehouse settings? No. Or like, hey, I, I drive a school bus for a living, so I guess all my books now are going to be about school buses. No. Um, write what you know. It just, I think in the simplest sense, means don't write something that you're not sure about. If you don't know how it works, maybe, you know, don't, don't work, you know, don't write about that. If you don't know how astrophysics works, maybe don't put the astrophysics part into your book. Um now, I will say this, that you can learn how to do things, and this is what I do, all right? So this, is, this goes back to number one. This is what works for me. I will learn enough about a subject that I can include it in the book, but not that I'm a master on it. And that works for me because I'm really good at, <laughs> uh, and I say really good in, in quotations, but you can't see them because uh, this is audio, but uh, I'm really good at reading a book once and then being like a so-called expert on that subject. Um, and uh, that's kind of both a positive and a negative Um it's kind of that mentality of like, oh, I watched a YouTube video, so now I can do this, um, which I like have done with like some serious things and some not so serious things. Like I've literally changed out the uh, passenger side transaxle on my wife's car and I have no mechanical <laughs> experience whatsoever. I can change the oil. I can uh, check the fluid in the windshield wiper reservoir, but yeah. So anyways, I watched this video on changing the transaxle and I did it and it works and we haven't had any issues with it since. So that's, that's always positive. But going back to write what you know, um, if you're writing a story and you say like, okay, if like for me, I'm writing a story and I'm writing about zombies. I've been a zombie fan for a pretty long time and, um, geez, uh, wow, really long time. And, um, and, uh, so I know zombies, I, I know the, the lore behind it. Um, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I guess I studied zombies, um, 
and I only say that in the sense of like I read a lot of books about them, um, and uh, watched movies, and not just in like a, an enjoyment uh, eating popcorn watching movie way, but actually like kind of like studied like how these how these things work, how zombies work, and what are the rules in the zombie universes. So when I went to go write the first book, um, as uh, you listened to uh, last week. Um, was that last week? Yeah, it was last week. But uh, the history of uh, of a new of a new death, the first book, is that it started off as a, a movie outline. So I had this outline, but how did I make that into an actual novel? So one of the things about that is like there's certain tropes in the zombie universe. Um, there's certain characters, and so I had to learn how to kind of. Uh, uh, mix those into the story. And one of the things that uh, I really enjoyed about uh, writing that first book is like, it's just like this mishmash of like all the things that I loved about the zombie genre. There's just like these over the part tops, uh, or over the part uh, uh, parts in it and uh, over the part, over the top parts. Jeez, Louise, Joshua, get your words straight. Here I am trying to teach you about writing and I can't even say a simple cliche. Anyways, it has these over the top parts in it and it's like got the gore and it's got um, language in it and uh, it's got certain characters who just kick butt and um, yeah, it's just it was just a lot of fun. I, I wanted to mix uh, different kinds of zombies in there because I love um I love the different kinds of zombies in zombie movies and games and all that. Like, I love the slow, uh, Night of the Living Dead Romero types and, uh, you know, that classic zombie, uh, the kind you kind of see in The Walking Dead. Um, but at the same time, the the fast, scary, freaky zombies from uh, the Dawn of the Dead remake or uh, 28 Days Later, those are scary zombies. And so I wanted to add those in there, too, just to add a, a level of... Uh, because... Uh, I know like in when I was writing, I was like, okay, like the the regular zombies, they are scary. And when there's a lot of them, it's very scary. But I needed something to kind of up the ante. So I was like, hey, let's put some of these fast zombies in there too. And then um, I guess spoilers, if you haven't read the first zombie novel, uh, there is a like a mutated kind of zombie at the end. And um, yeah. It was uh, another thing that I kind of just wanted to add from the zombie genre, like this kind of like uh, Resident Evil, um, uh, Left 4 Dead, and like this kind of like big, like hulking zombie that was just like a massive brute. And uh, yeah, so anyways, going back to write what you know, it's like I knew the whole zombie genre pretty well and pretty fluently. So that was one thing that I was very comfortable with when I was writing. And when it comes to writing what you know, it's a lot easier to put the words on the paper when you already know what you're talking about. If you're having to learn something new to get in, in into the story, it's just going to take you longer. And uh, that's not a bad thing. Like, I'm all for learning new things. And if you want to write about a certain thing and you're not quite sure about it, you know, take the time to learn it. But I would, I would definitely take the time to learn it before you start writing about it, before you start trying to create in that. Um, say if you want to write a romantic novel, but you've never read any romantic novels, um, maybe you should probably maybe read a couple of those and, <laughs> and see how that whole genre works. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, um, I've kind of always wanted to, uh, write sci-fi, but I really haven't read that much, um, science fiction, like, uh, mine's more more of a uh, science fantasy, which I guess would be kind of like Star Wars and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see where that goes. I've kind of upped the ante on science fiction. Um, and uh, one little uh, sub note on this, and then we'll move on. Uh, you don't always have to read like other other genres to learn about them too. I don't know if you know this, but there's these things, they're called movies, and you can watch those movies and get the basic story beats for that genre, and it'll save you some time, plus you get to watch movies, which is fun. Um, so anyways, that's number two, write what you know. Uh, number three, uh, here's another uh, one that you'll probably run across like all the time. So for some of you, not new information, but hopefully I will just kind of put it in a, a somewhat new light. Um but uh, yeah, 
So basically, there are two major camps when it comes to riding. Uh, there are pantsers and there are plotters. All right, and pantsers are the people that just like they just write. They just sit down, the words flow out of them, and they just write and write and write and write and write. No planning, no uh, I guess um, idea of where they're going. They're just this is the story and it's coming out, and. Um, they're called pantsers because they they write by the seat of their pants, which is a cliche that means things, I guess. But um, yeah, so uh, there's that camp, and then there's the plotters, who name makes a little bit more sense to me. But um, they actually sit down, they uh, they plot their story, they outline it, they love organization. They probably have each uh, draft uh, in uh, separate into different files on their computer, their Dropbox. And uh, yeah, so uh, I tend to be more of a plotter um, just because that's the way my mind works. And that's my huge vi- advice for for that is like figure out which one you are and you're not always going to be one or the other. Sometimes you can be kind of in, in the middle there. And um, what you need to do is you just need to find what works for you. All right, so say um, you like just writing huge chunks and that's easier for you to come across, but you always find yourself stuck in the middle. Um, well, maybe you do need to try a little bit of uh, not, ne- not necessarily outlining. Um, I think it's uh, Stephen King who, uh, if you're listening, uh, I loved your book on writing, which is titled On Writing. And um, so, uh, yeah. I think he he refers to it, and I've heard other people's refer to it. Um, but it's uh, like basically kind of like writing out the beats of the story, and um, and what that means is like it's not necessarily outlining like the way I do it is like I write like one one chapter, and then I like I write what it's about, and so I'll kind of have like this like it's almost a very very bare bones first draft. I wouldn't consider it a first draft, but. Um, it just basically tells me like what happens in this chapter, what happens in this chapter, what happens in this chapter. That way I already have the story laid out and I know how the story is kind of, kind of going to go. And, um, that helps me a lot because that frees me up to just like sit down and be like, okay, I, I can look at what is this chapter about? And then I can write it and it happens. And, um, it doesn't always necessarily end up like my summary. Um, And uh, which is great because that's how stories work sometimes. So they kind of evolve and they kind of grow as as you're making them. So, um, yeah, um, this goes back to the whole, you know, finding what works for you. um, And it goes back to number one, you know, writing advice sucks because it's not it's not tailored for just you. So you have to kind of find what works for you. And being a, po- a plotter or a pantser, uh, whether you write it all at once and then go back and look at your 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 spaghetti mess that you got on the paper there, or if you carefully plan out every single scene, um, find what works for you and uh, do that. And um, don't let uh, arguments from either side sway you to be something that you're not. Because you're going to have a harder time writing if you're trying to be something that you're not. And the thing that helps me most about um, outlining and I guess uh, plotting or making beats is that brings me to number four. Know the end. Know the end of the story before you set out. What are you trying to accomplish with the story? What are you trying to get across? Like, even if it's something silly like a zombie series, like... I knew where I wanted to end the story at. I wanted my characters to try to, their whole goal was to get out of Savannah and they finally do. It's cost them a lot, but they finally get out of Savannah. And um, I knew that as I was writing it in the beginning. I didn't know all the details and all the things that would take them to get them to that point because a lot of it did kind of pop up in the middle of writing it. Like there's a whole section there that um, they get uh, kidnapped or not kidnapped. They get uh, taken prisoner by these uh, crazy hipsters downtown. And uh, that was not in the original notes, um, but that was a scene that that came up. And I I don't know, it's one of my favorite scenes, but uh, 
it was one of those things that came across their path because I knew the point that I was trying to get them to. Now, sometimes your characters will take you to different points, so you have to be okay with that. Um, and this is a lot harder for like the extreme plotters, going back to that point, um, because most often the time they want to kind of direct the story of where they're going. Uh, but one piece of advice that I would give you that I feel like is pretty universal is just, you know, let the characters kind of go where they are taking the story. You know, they kind of begin to take on a life of their own and you see them as actual like kind of people. Um, the more you grow attached to them as an author and um, they, uh, yeah, so they kind of take the story in directions that you weren't planning. So um, be aware of that, but also keep in mind where you want to go um, with the story and uh, how you want to get to the end. Um, so technically you are the author, you are in control. So, you know, there's that, but anyways, and then uh, the final piece of advice, uh, number five, excuse me, <clears throat> is think about what you want to do with your story. So this is for a lot of you like new time writers and um, uh, people that are they like, hey, you're working on a story right now and you want to do something with it. Like, what do you want to do with that story when you're done with it? Some people just get enjoyment out of writing and just like to write and they like to make up stories, but they have no desire to put their stories out there. It's just for them. Uh, maybe it's just for them and a few close friends. But uh, some people have, you know, no desire to, you know, have a book published or um be uh, like a full-time author. But if that is what you're wanting to do, then that's something to think about at the beginning and as you're writing uh, the story. Um, so one of the things that I ran into uh, was that I wrote this story and I got to finishing it up and I'm like, what am I going to do with this thing? Um, and then if you like listen to uh, last week's episode about uh, how I, you know, got my start in this whole writing deal. Um, basically, I was like, okay, well, I could put it on the Kindle and I could put it out that way. And it wasn't really like, hey, I want to like be a full-time author. Um, it was more along the lines of like, hey, I I have a book out there and that's cool. I can show it to my friends and stuff like that. And um, But yeah, anyways, it kind of evolved from there. and People actually started buying it. So that was cool. And um, it evolved into a series. And uh, I did a video on this on YouTube where I was talking about the five things that I wish I knew beforehand. And one of those things was, you know, like I wish I kind of had thought about the what I wanted to do with this before I, I, I hit that publish button. Because there's a few things I would have done differently. Um, the biggest one is probably marketing. And uh, I know when some of you... Uh, artists and uh, more uh, creative types you hear the word marketing and you like just immediately are like ugh, that's that's ugh, i don't want to have to sell my art but uh when i say marketing i don't so much mean like selling tactics and stuff like that what which is like what a lot of people think of when marketing but marketing is just basically making your book shareable and uh, when you think about it like that um, when you think about marketing in a sense of that it is making your story shareable, it takes so much of the weight off of the idea of marketing. Um, basically, uh, what it is is like you want your book to be as shareable with as either as many people as possible or you want it for it to be shareable to a certain niche of people, which is both fine and uh, some people write for everybody and that works and some people write for a certain group of people. Uh, for example, like my first, my uh, Savannah zombie novel, uh, A New Death, uh, basically it was written, my ideal reader was, it was me. Uh, this was the zombie book that I wanted to read and um, just kind of, uh, it was like my love letter to the zombie genre. And um, if you are a zombie fan of uh, the zombie movies, games, and, and books, there was a whole bunch of references in there that you would you would hopefully see and that you would pick up on. And um, yeah, it was just this kind of like fun, fun project that I wrote towards uh, other zombie uh, lovers like me. And um, 
knowing knowing your audience is uh, a huge part of marketing and making it shareable. So uh, not everybody's into zombies, and uh, because of that, not everybody has read my book. Um, or my books because currently everything is about zombies because it's either the Savannah zombie novel series or the North Pole zombie series. So, uh, yeah, uh, maybe eventually I'll, uh, dip my toes in other genres, but, uh, as of right now, I'm still in zombie land. But, uh, yeah. So anyways, that's my final piece of advice on writing and, uh, yeah, just uh, think about the end when you're when you're writing and w- what you want to do, and think about how you want to approach this. If you are interested in like publishing your book, um, I've got like a bunch of resources that were extremely helpful to me, um, and um, you can check those out. I will try to include all the links and stuff in the show notes. Um, but yeah, there's been a good bit and it was it was weird because like when i first started like amazon kindle and the uh, ebook sales and all that and self-publishing like it was not quite at the peak that it was it was still very much like hey you can put up this book here real quick and you can make a bunch of money and it's kind of like this like what they would call the kindle gold rush and um there's just a lot of like just a lot of junk <laughs> out there that was just basically it was either trying to get you to buy their book for easy advice you can find online or basically selling you a pipe dream of like, oh, you can make a million dollars off of Kindle ebook sales by doing zero work, which is not the case. The work is it, it yeah, you're you're not just gonna get it for free. So anyways, here's some of the uh, most helpful. Uh, stuff uh, that uh, has helped me um, in no particular order, just the order I wrote it down in. Uh, the first one is a guy named uh, Nick Stevenson, and he is the author of a uh, book series. And um, I can't remember what the book series is. I should have wrote that down. But his website is yourfirst10kreaders.com, and that is 10, like the numeral, one zero. And uh, he has written a book called Your First 10,000 Readers, and it is basically about um, getting your start as an uh, indie author and how to get those first 10,000 people to read your book. Um, a lot of his information is really good. He does kind of funnel it into a course that he teaches. I haven't taken that course, but I have done a few uh, free seminars with him, and uh, he's got great information um, and uh He's got plenty of free information too, so don't feel like you're being sold into like his course. Like he does give plenty of it away for free, um, and it's super helpful. Uh, if you join his reading list, he does give you a free book. Um, I want to say it's called Reader Magnets. Um, it's been a while since I, I I've read it, but basically the premise is of just making your books um, uh, draw in readers like magnets. And so it's a good book. So uh, I follow uh, him and I get email updates from him. His is, he's got a good email list. He sends out a lot. So um, that's always good. It's good, free quality content. Um, he does have the course that you can pay for, but um, he does give a lot of away of it for free. So um, don't feel like you're being sold to. He's got good stuff. His name's Nick Stevenson. That's S T E. P-H-E-N-S-O-N, and that's uh, yourfirst10kreaders.com, so check him out. Next up is David Gogren, and he is the author of the book Let's Get Digital, and uh, he just recently did a revamp on that book and updated it for more of a more recent look on making uh, making an ebook and getting your story in ebook uh, distribution. And basically, if, if you are interested in being an indie author, a self-published author, this is one of those books that you have to read, all right? Because he, he does, he sets it up and makes it super seamless. Um, and that book is called Let's Get Digital. His website is davidgogren.com, which is D-A-V-I-D. G A U G H R A N dot com, and uh, he's got another um, email list, and he will send you a another free book. So he, there's two free books in this podcast so far, um, 
if you sign up for his list, he sends a decent amount of uh, emails. Uh, he's quickly talking uh, about uh, like um, book distribution and how to do it um, uh, cheaply and affordably um, right now. So he's got some good information in his uh, his uh, email list. So yeah, check him out. Both of those guys, super helpful. Um, and the next one up is uh, the guys over at Sterling and Stone which they used to do what was called the self-publishing podcast, but they have uh, rebranded it as the uh, Story Studio podcast. And um, you can go to their website, which is sterlingandstone.net, and you can, uh, I think, find the old episodes. I would encourage you to go find the old episodes and like listen up because it, it's very cool to see how they started. They basically started as... Um, Johnny and okay, there's there's three guys, uh, Johnny, Sean, and, and Dave, and uh, so basically Johnny was kind of just getting his toes wet in the self publishing business. Uh, Sean and Dave kind of have done a few book series, and so it's basically like this this journey of these guys figuring out how to do this whole thing, and now they run like this whole like it basically they have their own like self publishing like company, um, and they uh, have a few different um uh like sections of it like they have like different like they're like these type of books and they have these type of books they've got their non-fiction books and uh it was really cool just to kind of see how like they just kind of like blew up and uh and just kind of like took over but they have great advice and they interview all sorts of different people on there so i would definitely uh, encourage you to go check out the old episodes of the self-publishing podcast and then, um, which I think they rebranded as the self-publishing podcast classics. Um, I can't remember. I haven't checked it in a second, but they also have the story studio. They, they actually have like four or five different podcasts. Um, I know on Apple podcasts, but, uh, so yeah, but their, their main one is the story studio and it's great because they talk about story and for them, a huge focus is on, on the story and, uh, it's stories that make books. And so it's very story driven. Um, but they do have a lot of cool, uh, business advice and marketing stuff and all that. Um, and, uh, I would always recommend their book. Their book is kind of a collection of the um, earlier episodes, um, the classic episodes, and um, you can check that out. It's on uh, Amazon. The actual print book is massive, so I would recommend for your wrist's sake to get the, uh, the, e the e-book, but it's called Write, Publish, Repeat, and uh, that's by uh, Sean Platt. David Wright and Johnny B. Truant. Um, I don't think it's necessarily in that order, but yeah, if you just uh, Amazon and you type in write, publish, repeat, should be the first thing that comes up because it's awesome and it's a good book and it's got plenty of advice in it. Uh, so that's another book. And uh, for uh, number four on my list of people that have been helpful to me, uh, Joanna Penn. She is an author and she has written many books and she has written uh, a lot of books on like the business side too of, of the self-publishing game. So check that out. Check her out on Amazon. Her website is The Creative Pen. That is uh, P-E-N-N dot com. And uh, she has a podcast too, which is also called The Creative Pen. And her podcasts are super, super packed with um, awesome information. She interviews plenty of people and just is just a uh, treasure trove of um, information. And so check out her podcast. And then lastly, not so much about writing, but they have inspired me like creatively. Uh, cre creativity. Yeah. Anyways, they've inspired me uh, a good bit when it comes to story because um, that's one of their big focuses too, but they come from a, a different avenue. And that is the guys over at Film Riot, which is a YouTube channel. And uh, they have a website and they do all sorts of short films and stuff like that. But uh, the main guy over there is Ryan Connolly. And they have just recently started a podcast too. So there's another podcast you can add to it. And it's I think it's just called the Film Riot Podcast. But they have, he has had on there uh, different uh, directors and writers. He had uh, an actor on there, Matt Lantner, which you might uh, know him from. Uh, he does the voice of Anakin in The Clone Wars. And at least that's where I knew him from. But uh, yeah, so 
there's plenty of good information in there. And it's always good to hear about story from a different kind of perspective other than writing. I think uh, for, I guess, number six piece of writing advice is like study outside of just writing too. Like there's so many other different good ways of telling story, whether it's movies or TV or plays or even poetry. Um, So uh, yeah, check out that podcast. Um, That's all the um, things I can think of right now. This is a little bit one of the longer episodes, but uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, Not much else going on. Uh, I got to get ready for work. I got to go. I got to leave in like 10 minutes. So um, I'll catch you later this week when I release part two of A New Death CJ Story. So check that out. Talk to you later. Adios.